what I want to do today is talk about the derivation of the angular momentum equations. And generally, the reason for this is because they are often challenging in this course. This is one of the more complex concepts we deal with. And what I'll try and do is look at what angular impulse and momentum are, uh, define the angular impulse momentum principle, and relate it to Newton's second law. And looking at ways of using the angular impulse momentum principle. And you, you'll see those in other videos in terms of examples, but just a starting point. Angular momentum is important for orbital motions. I mean, satellite about a planet, and this is uh, something from a Colorado uh, course on sustainable development. And it's it's just useful. How do, you, how do you sort of launch a satellite, and how do you make sure it stays in orbit? And you can see the two types of orbits there. Uh, it's a useful bridge to rigid body analysis. And typically at this point in the course, the next lecture or the next couple lectures from now, uh, I'll talk about rigid body kinet kinematics. Excuse me. We tend to focus today on the angular impulse momentum principle. So moving forward from this, angular momentum will have units of kilogram meter squared per second or pound mass feet squared per second, slugs feet squared per second also. If you differentiate that, you end up with these terms right here. So h dot p uh, with respect to time. Uh, this term right here, which is sort of a velocity cross with another velocity, and then a moment arm cross with an acceleration. So Looking at that, I can sort of rewrite Ra with respect to P, Va minus Vp, so no problem. Uh, and Va dot as force because it's multiplied by a mass. So looking at this term, I have velocity of A here, velocity of A here, and I have Ra cross with, or with respect to P cross with that. If I look at this, I can say Ra with respect to P cross with mv dot A is really a moment, so a moment about P. And two parallel vectors, Va, Va, are going to equal zero. So this term will go away, and I end up with moments about P equals Hp dot, the angular momentum, uh, plus Vp crossed with mva. This looks a lot like our force equation. If P is a fixed point, velocity P is equal to zero. Velocity P is parallel to V sub A, the cross product is zero. And MP is equal to the time rate of change of angular momentum. If you integrate it, which is the standard thing to do, you have the angular impulse momentum principle. HP1 plus the integral from T1 to T2 of MP dt equals to HP2. So out of this, you have something that looks a lot like that that linear impulse momentum expression, but now you're using moments. So what happens if you have a system of particles? So we have, you know, for example, three particles that we're looking at. And we can define with respect to some center of mass, G, and we can look at a particular point. So if I look at some moments about P, uh, for each of the particles, I would have the angular momentum or the rate of change of angular momentum plus velocity P cross with MIVI. So MIVI, for example, is M1V1, M2V2, whatever it is. I can define the distances, R1, 2, and 3, and I can define the distance to the center of mass, Rg. Finally, I have the distance to the par, or point P, which is Rp. Veloc or P has a velocity, V sub P, and each of the masses have their own velocity, V1, V2, V3. Within the system of particles, I'll have a number of internal forces, F1 on 2 and F2 on 1. F1 on 3, F3 on 1, F3 on 2, F2 on 3. And if I look at 
Those, I, I, I kind of know where that's going to go, but let's continue a little bit. I have external forces, which are capital F, one, two, and three. I'm just going to put them in there arbitrarily. And three, you can see is sort of off, but, but there you go. Um, and I can look at the moments and say, well, the moments are really uh, the, re the, the distance, uh, the relative distance of each particle, I with respect to P, cross with the individual uh, forces plus the internal forces acting on that body. And if I sum over all of those particles, I go back to what I had before. So I have some uh, 1 to n of all n particles uh, of moments about p and with respect to i and all of the rate of change of i and all of that stuff. And I end up with this final equation right here. So right there. Okay. So all good. And if we look at that final equation, we can take the first term and say, well, it's it's going. To be, I can split it up in terms of external and internal forces. And the nice thing about the internal forces is that they all cancel. So Fij equals minus Fji, and Fij cross with Ri minus Rj is going to equal zero because it's going to be parallel. And if I look at the second term, the time rate of change of angular momentum with respect to p, velocity p cross with mivi, I can rewrite that last part as vp cross with mvg. So the, the velocity of the center of mass defines what exactly is happening here. And if the velocity of the center of mass defines that, it's enough to sort of work from. So it's, I mean, these are getting complex in terms of writing the equations, but the ideas are pretty based. So the total angular uh, momentum about point P is just going to be the sum of all of the momentum. So I take the angular momentum of each of the individual particles, sum them up, I'll get the total system. And that's what I end up with is the momentum, the angular momentum relation for a system of particles is seven moments about point P equals HP dot plus VP crossed with MVG. Now, of course, what I want to do is I want to get rid of that VP term as the second term. And usually velocity P is zero, velocity G is not zero, but it sometimes could be. P is G, okay, that, that's a possibility, and in fact, it's very likely. Uh, and the velocity of P and G are parallel, though. But all of that is to end up with this relationship at the bottom. And by ending up with that relationship at the bottom, I get rid of everything and I have a nice expression to work from. So we're kind of walking away from the whole single particle that we did with Newton's second law. And we want to do something that deals with a closed system of particles. So we're going into in, in the next set of lectures, rigid bodies, but a, a rigid body can be considered a closed system of particles. And if that physical object is a mass in the surrounding, it satisfies impulse momenta. And they're exactly the same in terms of form as Newton's first or second law and, and the angular conservation of angular momentum, but now it's written in this form. So sum of forces equals mass times acceleration to the center of mass. Sum of moments about point P is equal to a, the time rate of change of angular momenta uh, about P and VP cross with MVG. What we've done today is really look at the relations for angular impulse momenta. And I, I did this very quickly, and I know that. Uh, but these are the, I've covered this in, in the regular set of lectures. Uh, but I wanted to have a video for this just separately. So you had something to look at with all the equations and the systems drawn out nicely. So this is this is part of that goal. And I'll look at doing other videos for this. Thank you and look forward to seeing you again.